right, so we are back for round three of our modern eight man with Jun midrange. We are on the draw. Um, our opponent has kept his hand. We have two land, Dark Confidant, Lightning Bolt, Abrupt Decay, Terminate, Liliana of the Veil. This hand's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, we have uh, like tap land into Dark Confidant, uh, access to three removal spells, Liliana to top it off. Um, couldn't really ask for much more than this. So I would keep. Hopefully we don't play twin. Um, Misty Rainforest means possibly twin. Could be Infect too, which we're happy, happy to see. Infect it is. Interesting. All right, so we are playing Raging Ravine, so we can use these removal spells. Um, I think we have a pretty good Infect matchup. Liliana the Veil seems to be pretty good. Haven't. Uh, I haven't, I haven't been able to play this matchup yet, so. Alright, hits us for two. Taken two. We are at two poison. Um, play a land. I think we can play Confidant right now. Um, so like he makes us the 2-2, we block, uh, we basically trade our Confidant for a pump spell, which lets us like untap and cast two removal spells, so our opponent has four cards in hand. The other option is just like, you know, pass by the Confidant, um, and just like, you know, take some damage, so we'll like take another two, and then we'll try and terminate on the end of his turn. I feel like if he didn't have Ink Moth Nexus, I'd be more happy with that play, but now I just kind of want to like play a ground guy. He could, like, Apostle's Blessing into, like, a whole bunch of pump. But I think if there's ever a point where I can safely play Confidant, it's now. This could be completely wrong. Like I said, I haven't played the matchup yet. But I feel like, like the reasoning for this seems pretty sound. Like, if he wants to just animate Nexus and fly over... Um, Okay, Distortion Strike. Plus one, plus zero. Oh, can't be blocked. Might be in trouble, boys. So we're taking three. Can't block it. All right, just at five. That's fine. I'm fine with that. All right, so we revealed a Raging Ravine, drew another Bolt. We want to play Overgrown Tomb this turn, that way we can like cast two removal spells and uh, play Raging Ravine next turn and Liliana if that's something we want to do. Distortion Strike has Rebound? It does. Yeah, so we're going to have to main phase one of these spells. I think it becomes Abrupt Decay. So, I mean, I think we, yeah, I think we main phase the Lightning Bolt here. Um, and then on his turn, like, he rebounds. He's going to swing for three again. Um, I believe we go to eight. And we can bolt at end of turn. Three cards in hand. Seems about right. So on his turn, he if he wants to like spend a mana to animate Ink Moth Nexus, he has two mana left. Ink Moth Nexus swings for three. Yeah, I don't. I can't cast a lightning bolt on his turn because then, like, he has to spend. I know, like, this he could just let this die and then load up his pumps on the Ink Moth Nexus. Like, if he has, um, like, so say this resolves and then he gets to untap. Uh, he needs to spend a mana. Um, might as well swing. Yeah, he needs to spend a mana to animate his Ink Moth, which means if he has a land, if he has another land, that means he has access to three mana, four cards. So we could have, you know, like back to back pump spells. But if he doesn't have another land. That means he only has two mana. Um, so I guess like he could Vines of Vasswood plus a pump spell. Yeah, 
yeah, we're, I guess this, like, this signs us up, like, so this forces us to go to 8. We're going to 8 poison regardless, um, because we can't cast this Abrupt Decay before he casts his whatever. Um, so I guess the payoff for, like, waiting on the Lightning Bolt is better, but we have a higher chance of getting blown out. This could all be, like, you know, basic to to you guys watching, but for me, the first time playing the matchup, I'm just trying to, like, verbalize my thought process, and one, to hopefully be um, educational if you guys aren't, did I F6? Maybe. Alright, so he just taxing probed, so he knows, he knows what's up. Abrupt Decay doesn't do anything against this Ink Moth Nexus. I don't think I played this correctly. Hmm. Yeah, it's possible we did that wrong. I think we Abrupt Decay the Noble Hierarch. We can block the Glistener Elf. And this forces him to like use a pump, like we can take another damage for a turn from the Ink Moth. This is interesting. This is a really fun matchup. I've seen it played a lot and I've like seen discussion on it a lot, but I haven't been able to play it myself yet. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we're running into this in the finals. Because I can definitely see where I have a lot to learn. Um, the Vernet Catacombs was a good draw because this lets us terminate plus Lightning Bolt. So we'll play that and pass. Yeah, I definitely think we should have uh, killed this dude with the Abrupt Decay. Because um, Abrupt Decay doesn't hit Ink, Ink Moth Nexus, so. He used green. Interesting. Yep. So one, two, three, Liliana, Sacrifice. I think we just play another Dark Confidant. Yeah, we have Ooze to gain us some life after that. Well, hold on, maybe we wanted to play Ooze because, well, he's at nine, so this is four, seven. Yeah, I think we, one, two, three, four. I don't know, we're, we're a mana short anyways. Um, so playing Ooze would have meant that we could eat a creature, go up to three, animate Ravine, um, and hit for um, four, eight, nine, ten. No, he only needs to be a three, three. Yeah, we probably should have played Ooze instead. Maybe swing in with both of our guys. And 
then we play uh, Ooze plus, we play all these, Ooze, Bolt, Liliana. Yeah, I want him to trade. So I'm not interested in like Bolt and then Liliana sack, I want him to trade. I think, uh, yeah, I think the way we played this game, a little bit messy. Looks like we're going to get there, but um, I think we, I think it ended up being pretty close and it didn't need to be that close. All right, this is great. Not only does it mean we get to save this bolt, um, but like we're now we're not at risk of dying to like revealing Tassiger plus Polygon's command or something. Um, one, two, three, Liliana, keep Liliana, sack a creature, play scavenging ooze, and we get to pass with lightning bolt up. Okay. Alright, so that was game one. Um, game two, we want all of our cheap removal. Uh, Cold Guns Command seems pretty good. Um, Fulminator Mage is an answer to Ink Moth Nexus, but probably not where we want to be. I don't think Tassiger is where we want to be. It's just like a clunky card. Um, Abbott seems fine. I think we're set up to handle handle infect pretty well in main deck, so not much needs to change. I can see cutting a maelstrom pulse. Kogon's command is sweet because it can like if he's animating a Nick Moth Nexus, uh, we can like end of turn, you know, destroy a Zinc Moth Nexus, make him discard a card, or you know, like shock a random noble hierarch or something. Um, so it's definitely great. Maelstrom pulse might not be good. I think it's fine. I think it's better than a Fulminator Mage. Maybe that's it. All right, Ghost Quarter for an Ink Moth. Um, no one mana removal, but we have Ooze, that can at least block a Glistener Elf. Abbott, our opponent mulliganed. I think we keep. Maybe if our opponent keeps, we might mulligan this hand, but I think it's good enough that we can keep it. It's a little slow, like these Terminates are not impressing, not impressing anybody. Lightning Bolts they are not, um, but I think we can keep this. Play a Mire, say go. Yeah. Um, so we want a overgrown tomb, I believe. Yeah, overgrown tomb stomping ground. Forest. So we're going to play the stomping ground here. I think we pass. We take another two. Um, and then, like, we're just going to end of turn, go for a terminate. That'll let us play a ghost quarter and ooze. I think that's where I want to be. 
not interested in running ooze out there like I would be interested in like running the dark confidant out there because the ooze isn't really giving me any sort of like advantage like I'm not I'm not gaining anything by getting this on the field as quick as possible unlike the dark confidant Why is he fetching main phase for the uh... I'm just gonna go for like a mighty bold Krosa. That's the one, right? Plus four, plus four in your main phase. I'm at four. Okay. Ooh, bolt is good. Um, yeah, so this bolt means we're definitely going to try and get this terminate out of our hand as quick as possible. Um, I think we play the ghost quarter. It's another removal spell. Um, but we'll probably like aggressively use this terminate just because we only have one red mana. Position is a good draw. I think we fire it off here. He's not interested. He's shown that he's not interested in animating his Ink Moth Nexus into our Ghost Quarter. He still just wants to like play things. Become immense. Yeah, so we'll take Distortion Strike. If he wants to run his Noble Hierarch into our Ooze and then like kill it with a Mutagenic Growth, I'm fine with that. Yeah, like, I'll trade this ooze for a mutagenic growth. Nah, I won't. I won't even do that. He's, yeah. Because he doesn't, he probably doesn't even swing. Because if he swings and he wants to spend those two cards for eight damage, I just take, yeah. So, this is actually just free. So as long as I blow up his Ink Moth Nexus in response to him animating, Vines of Vasswood doesn't protect it, but once it becomes a creature, that's how that works, right? I'm asking you like you're going to tell me. Um, so he animates Ink Moth Nexus, it's then a creature, can't be the target of spells or abilities. Ghost Quarters thing is a ability, so as long as I just do it before it becomes a creature, it should be fine. All right, I think we play Abbott this turn. So we're going to swing first. We're really just putting a creature on the field, and if we hit a land, that's great. Um, if we hit a discard spell, that's great. But, like, if we hit a Tarmogoyf, I don't even play it. Yeah, like, I don't even play the Confidant.
He has mutagenic growth, become immense, and one card we don't know about. Wow, defense. How much damage is that? So Noble Heart swinging for two. He makes it uh, four, five, six, seven, and then plus six, 13, 15. So I feel like end of turn, Abrupt Decay, the Wild Defiance, if that's something that I'm interested in doing. All right. Yeah, I think we just want to get that off the field. It's not necessary. Uh, I'm, I missed uh, I missed eating to make my Uzo four four. If he doesn't block, he's dead. Yeah. makes it a 2-3 um, I can terminate his other hierarch so we trade that leaves him with a become immense and nothing else he could also just become immense it but that seems like a poor use of that I could just like say okay, play a Tarmogoyf. This puts him to six. I think I just say okay and play a Tarmogoyf. So technically you should be at five. Yeah, because, so the terminate to kill the other hierarch, it gets both of his hierarchs off the table and the abbot just trades. But then, I don't know, I guess my I put him on a two-turn clock and he's still on a two-turn clock anyways. Though not necessarily because of the lightning bolt. I don't know which one's better. I think either one is fine because I think I'm significantly far ahead. I'm like far enough ahead that I don't think it matters. Like, he had multiple turns where he needed to draw, like, a non-land creature, um, and he didn't. And then even if he did, I still had a whole bunch of removal. Like, when you're at, a, when you're at the stage of the game where you have a Liliana in your hand that you can't cast, and it's okay, I think, I think I'm doing pretty well. I may not know much about the matchup, but I seem to be doing pretty well. Further proof that almost anyone can be Jun Guy. Yeah, yeah. I guess he could animate there. Um, he could animate Hit of Vines. Here, how do we return to the game? I guess he could animate. Uh, so like in response, he taps his breeding pool to animate. Um, if he had another land, like so because like the, the activation is on top of the ghost quarters, and then it becomes a creature, and then he could Vines. And then if he had a, um, a Become Immense, he could have used the Become Immense. I mean, he still dies to the Lightning Bolt in hand. Uh, but that is something to think about. Seeing, like, visually, visually seeing it on the stack now, 
Um, like he animates Snake Moth Nexus, I pop Ghost Quarter, but nothing's stopping him from spending another mana to animate it again. So it becomes a creature before the Ghost Quarter ability resolves, at which point, if I'm correct, which I don't see why I wouldn't be, uh, Vines of S would, um, would protect it from uh, the Ghost Quarter effect. Um, but he, did, he would need five lands for that play to work. Because uh, one to animate the first time, one to animate the second time. Big Moth Nexus counts, like, to swing. Um, and then he needs, like, one to Vines and then one to become immense. But that is something to think about. Because um, at that point, like, it's turn nine, so the game has been going on for a little bit. And that seems to be his only out is Vines of Vasswood. Um, plus, be plus the become immense that we know he has. So... Um, but yeah, that was it. So 3-0, um, we beat uh, regular Splinter Twin, um, Teamer Twin, and then uh, Infect. So, um... Alright guys, so thanks for watching my video. Really quick, just want to uh, say thanks again to Card Hoarder for letting us borrow the cards uh, so we can record this video. I want to show you guys really quick how to use Card Hoarder's uh, deck upload tool and uh, to like browse their online store. It's really easy. Um, you just go over to cardhoarder.com, hit this little upload deck button, and uh, here you can choose a file. Um, now this file can be uh, either a deck export or a file that you get off of the internet, like the one I'm going to have for you at the bottom, or you can even export your wish list as a file, and then uh, choose that um, for my desktop. Um, so you just hit upload deck, and there you go. So it's in, you can see um, everything, the quantity that they have. It looks like they have everything. If they're missing something, it'll show up here. Uh, it'll give you a little warning that they don't have uh, such and such copies of a card. Um, but you can go in, change the quantity, uh, get the price breakdown for how much everything costs. And then from here, you can um, you know, buy it, share it, do a whole bunch of different things. Um, it's really easy, really cool tool to use. Um, if you already have half of the deck, uh, maybe you load it up into Magic Online and you see you're only missing a few cards, um, it's not hard to, uh, uh, to do the same thing. You just go over to Binders, Wishlist. Um, so say you were missing like these cards and then you can uh, just export your wishlist as a text file and uh, do the same thing, go from there. Good God. So pretty easy, uh, check it out. Um, check out Card Hoarder's uh, site and I will see you guys next week.